Good morning everyone and welcome to the second part of the first edition of the Cycling Bulletin, in which we will talk about new rumors and a possible duel in the Grand Tours next year. The recent ban of Tramadol by the WADA, we will announce the venues of future cycling world championships like the one in 2027, we will give the latest news of some cyclists like Bernal or Benut, and we will finish with Cyclocross. Remember that you have available on your channel the first part of this cycling bulletin with all the news of the market and teams. You have the link in the description down below. I'll appreciate if you leave a like on the video and a subscription to the channel and let's go with the news. We start this cycling bulletin with very relevant news. The World Anti-Doping Agency, WADA, announced after its meeting on the 23rd of September in Sydney that Tramadol would be considered a banned substance in all sports from the 1st of January 2024. This announcement was leaked two days ago by British newspaper The Telegraph. After spending a decade as part of WADA's monitoring program and the demands of groups such as the Movement for Accredible Cycling, the opiate will finally be banned as it meets two of the three criteria established by the Anti-Doping Code, its potential to improve sporting performance and being a risk to the health of the consuming athlete, as tramadol can generate serious addiction and physical dependence. UCI president David Laportien applauded Wada's decision and said he was confident that the Court of Arbitration for Sport would uphold the UCI's disqualification of Nairo from the Tour. His statements were It is right to appeal the decision, so I have no comment on that. However, we have been able to find tramadol in two different stages. When you know that tramadol disappears very quickly, then it can't be that it was only taken once. Nairo Quintana claims he never took it, but tramadol is not something you produce yourself, and if you have tramadol, it doesn't come directly from your body. Currently, the use of tramadol does not constitute a violation of the UCI anti-doping program, only a breach of the medical regulations, but that will most likely change soon with this WADA announcement. Meanwhile, Nairo faces this Sunday the road race in Wollongong, in which he himself confirmed that he will give his best to support his compatriot Sergio Higuita, leader of the Colombian team thanks to his good form after the Vuelta. In addition to all of this, at the same meeting, Wada decided to keep cannabis on the list of banned substances as it goes against the spirit of the sport. We start the individual cyclist section with Egan Bernal, who has brought forward his return to Colombia to undergo the knee surgery he had planned as part of his rehabilitation. The knee operation took place on the 23rd of September, removing pins, a screw and a wire, and was successfully completed. Thus, Bernal closes his 2022 season after winning five UCI points in the Coppa Sabatini and will not race the Tour of Croatia and Lombardia, the two races he had planned. We have two good news from two Jumbo riders. The first one is from Cis Benud, who after the accident he suffered while training in Livigno at the beginning of August, is progressing in the recovery of his fractured cervical vertebra. Benud will no longer have to wear the strong neck brace and will be able to use a softer one to sleep. He was also able to get back on a mountain bike and take short rides in the street where he lives. The other is Milan Vader, who will return to competition in the next Tour of Croatia after a long recovery from the injuries caused by a terrible fall he suffered in the fifth stage of the Itzulia, for which he had to be put in an induced coma. The cyclist went to Bilbao Hospital where he was treated and thanked the intensive care staff for their work as they saved his life. We also have to highlight the stroke suffered by Audrey cordon Rago on Sunday 11th, which forced her to withdraw her participation in the World Championships. Initially, many French media outlets and others accused the cyclist of laziness or not wanting to represent the French colors. But Audrey revealed on Twitter on Saturday the 17th what had happened to her. The stroke was not detected in the initial test, but a medical team strongly advised her to have an MRI scan, and it was thanks to this that it was discovered. Cordon Rago ended her statement by assuring that her season is over and that ahead comes a period of rest in which she will undergo an operation to solve her heart problem. In terms of retirements, we start with Nikki Terpstra. The former winner of Paris-Roubaix and the Tour of Flanders declared that, despite having some other offers for other teams, he has preferred to end his time as a professional road cyclist at the age of 38. He might go on to gravel racing, and his last competition as a professional will be the Wunen Thetskadze, 
a six-day track cycling event to be held between the 6th and 11th of December. Guy Neef, Israel Premier Tech rider and the first Israeli to compete in the Tour de France, declared that in this 2022 season his inner flame for cycling has been extinguished and that he will retire. And we finish with Tanja Erath, winner of the Swift Academy several years ago and now racing for EF Education Tipco. The reason for her retirement from professional cycling is that she has been struggling with her mental health since a crash at last year's La Course to the France. We also have two news of retired cyclists. The first one is Jan Ulrich, winner of the Tour de France in 1997 and who since his retirement has gone through dark times, being helped by Lance Armstrong among others. The German legend announced that he will collaborate with Amazon Prime Video on a four-episode documentary to be released in 2023 in which he will tell his whole story, his best and worst moments, how he went from being a hunter to a target. And the other is the Italian legend Francesco Casagrande, who after the celebration of the Ran Piconero 2022, a mountain bike marathon in which he finished third, was hospitalized due to heart problems. Fortunately, his condition has since improved. We start the races and calendar section with the Tour de France 2023 and Taris Pogacar's statements after the World Championship time trial. The Slovenian said that although Evenepoel's performance in the Vuelta was very strong and intelligent, the next step for the Vuelta España winner is to go to the Tour de France. Will we see them both at the start in Bilbao in the next tour, or will Evenepoel go to the Giro with the free time trials it is likely to have? If you ask Quickstep boss, Lefebvre, Evenepoel will focus on the Giro next year, but we'll see how the plans develop. For the 2023 Tour de France route, we should also mention a couple rumors. A stage that will climb the Col de la Loz will have a mountain finish at the Altiport de Courchevel, and another that will finish either in Morsin or in the Sky Resort of Avorias, and could have a profile like the one you are seeing on the screen. We also have a couple of Volta España rumors to comment on. In 2023, it will be 40 years since the first arrival of the Vuelta at the Lagos de Covadonga, and the town council of Cangas de Onís is doing everything possible to make it a stage finish and to make the town the start of the next stage. Moreover, it seems increasingly clear that the mythical Angliru will be the last great climb and the final judge of the next Vuelta a España. And we finish with the Giro and a new rumor. Steve Morabito, a former professional cyclist, is said to have designed the stage to be held on 18th of May which could be a mountain finish in the sky resort of Crans Montana, a well-known climb in the Tour de Romandie. Let's go now to the 191 UCI Congress, where the most important news for the future of cycling was announced, the new UCI Anthem. <laughs> now, out of jokes, the venues of the future world championships of the different cycling disciplines were unveiled. We have to highlight two new venues. Montreal, which will host the Road and Time Trial World Championships in 2026 and will mark the return to North America from Richmond 2015, and the Haute Savoy Department in France, which will gather in 2027 the 19 UCI cycling disciplines in the second Super World Championship. The first one being next year in Glasgow, Scotland. According to David Laportien, we have to expect a 2027 World Cup for the GC riders and climbers, so the route chosen should be a little more demanding than the 1980 World Cup held in Haute Savoy itself, which revolved around the Côte de Domancy and was won by Bernard Hinault. Let's go now to the racing and calendar section and start with Filippo Ganna's hour record attempt on Saturday the 8th of October at 8 p.m. Central European Summer Time in Grenchen where Dan Bigham beat Campenard's record a while ago. While Ghana's attempt was originally scheduled for the 23rd or 24th of August, he decided to postpone it until after the World Championships. And while this should be a cause for celebration for the entire cycling community, RCS Sport, the organizer of Il Lombardia, criticized the chosen date of the 8th of October as it coincides with the Lombardia, but actually the time class would not go beyond the chosen day, as the record attempt will take place several hours after Il Lombardia has already finished. We continue with the UCI itself having published numerous calendars for the 2023 season, of which we must highlight the presence of the Vuelta Femenina, the former Ceratithid challenge by La Vuelta, which will be held between the 1st and 7th of May and will have seven stages. 
And another piece of good news is the return of the Volta a San Juan, which after two years of absence due to the pandemic, will return to the UCI Pro Series calendar in 2023 and will celebrate its 39th edition between the 22nd and the 29th of January. We will see who succeeds Evenepoel as the winner of the race. We close this cycling bulletin with the news of Cyclocross. The official calendar of this season's World Cup has been announced, which will have 14 races distributed among eight countries. The absence of London, which had been rumored, is confirmed now and it will be replaced with Dublin, although talks are still ongoing with the English capital for the 2023-2024 season. Meanwhile, Mashmechelen and Gavere will replace Ruchpen and Denermonde, which will not be there due to financial problems. And the X2O Badkamers Trophy calendar has also been presented, which will consist of eight rounds starting on November the 1st with a Koppenberg Cross. We have some news regarding two nards. It may be that the Letrozole he tested positive for in January was sourced from a recovery shake. It was taken to the Cologne laboratory in June for analysis, but this did not start until early August, and a different procedure was used to the that of the Leuven laboratory. While the UCI continues to drag out the case unnecessarily, Arts continues training, was seen supporting his brother Thais in Kriveke and has not cut his hair since the news of his positive test, because if the UCI asks for further investigation, an old hair sample and its analysis could be the key. The Krill and Fritzstadt team was presented on the 17th of September. Its riders will ride in a green and white jersey and will have Lorenz Zweig as the men's team leader, accompanied by Emil Westringe and Joran Bissure. The women's team will include Yara Kastelein, Marion Norbert Riverol, and Sanne Kant, among others. The latter has extended her contract for two more years, while Saide van Sinai, Belgian junior champion, will join the team on the 1st of January 2023. The day before, the Alpes in the Kerning cyclocross project for this season was presented, which will add Quinter Hermans to the roster from the 1st of January. The goal of the Root Hood brothers is clear, to return to being a top team capable of fighting toe-to-toe -to -toe with Powell Sounds and Bingle and Baloastrek Lions after a difficult 2021-22 season. A Steve Tilford Foundation Racing has announced its new kit and lineup for the new cyclocross season. Curtis White, Raylene Nass and Lithi Gonzalez are the team's free riders. We must also talk about the other streak, twin brother of Lawrence, who after running out of contract at the end of last season has found a private sponsor in Covera, a company of kitchens and accessories. With this move, he joins Jens Adams as a private rider. And we finish with the fact that, in addition to Femme Van Empel's switch from Powell Sausen Bingo to Jumbo Visma as of the 1st of January 2023, Lauren Mollengraf, third of the Fireville Junior World Championships last season, will ride for Torma Cyclocross this season. And here ends the second part of the first cycling bulletin, in which we have unveiled all the rest of the news of the last week in the world of cycling and cyclocross. In the next one or two videos, we will give an update on the battle for the UCI points, most likely starting with Movistar, Lodo and Israel. You will have both of them available on the channel next week. If you like the video, remember that a like and a subscription are always welcome. See you in a few days.